Halloween in Shanghai was much more exciting than in the West. Take a look at the streets of Shanghai for the night. The superheroes were out. They had to fight off Cheng Guang, the bylaw officers. This scene was a first for Shanghai. In recent years, Halloween in Shanghai has been very lively. Many businesses decorated to attract young people. This city's plaza, named Found 158, is a hot spot for Halloween activities, filled with young people dressed up in fancy costumes and attracting crowds of spectators. Netizen said that in previous years during Halloween, although there were many people, they mainly gathered at the scene of the event. Yet this year, not only was the Found 158 Plaza full of people, but even the streets in a radius of 2 to 300 meters were packed with people. The crowd was a few times bigger than previous years. What was more eye-catching is that in previous years, most people dressed up as ghosts, clowns, or various looks with traditional Halloween elements. But this year, in addition to ghosts and clowns, there were more looks that were local and unique. The simpler ones were McDonald's paper bags with two holes punched in them. The fancy ones were fully armored costumes, or groups of people got together to enact a certain scene. Here are the black and white deities from traditional Chinese culture. There were also Buddha and other divine beings everywhere, which corresponds to the reality of young people's confusion and emptiness in the face of great uncertainty. Thus, it is better to burn incense and worship Buddha than to work hard. No school, no work, but only incense has become a trend. It can be said that Shanghai Halloween is a special kind of reality. It doesn't have any religious overtones, nor does it have anything to do with the West. The parades and cosplays of the past two days are completely new behaviors, but they were acted out as part of Halloween. Some of the cosplays have a deeper meaning. Look at this young man dressed as a road sign that reads, I miss you in Shanghai. It was reminiscent of a tribute to former Premier Li Keqiang who passed away suddenly. There was also a man carrying a large wreath and holding a small wreath with the word memorial in the middle. It's too abstract. Too abstract. Photos subsequently showed that the police were on to the people exhibiting the performance art. The person holding up the road sign was asked by the police to put down the sign and was questioned. The person carrying the wreath was also questioned by the police and his mobile phone was looked through by the police. The wreath was later confiscated. Recently, former Premier Li Keqiang passed away suddenly at the age of 68. Online public opinion has directly pointed out that his sudden death was unnatural as he was a retired number two person of the CCP at the state level. He was supposed to have a specialized medical team in charge of his health. The cause of his sudden death has raised a lot of speculations. If you're interested in this story, you can check out our previous episode. The link is posted below. Here is the Dabai, the anti-epidemic worker wearing a white bodysuit, holding a cotton swab and asking for a nucleic acid test when he sees someone. The passers-by cooperated with the show. They sprayed disinfectant on passers-by and others responded, I want it too, I want it too. Of course, there is also the nucleic acid test, except that this cotton swab is long. This one is even more over the top. Even the dinosaur must comply. What do you mean you're going out? Go out to play. Make sure you have the mask on. Today is Halloween, so I'll make an exception for you. Next time we catch you like this, we'll quarantine you for three to five days. Have your community make a report to me, okay? Okay. <laughs> Later, the two who were dressed as Dabai were taken away by the police. And then there were Winnie the Poohs. After many social media outlets at home and abroad referred to Xi Jinping as Winnie the Pooh, China's internet censors made a big move to block all Winnie the Pooh related comments on social media. But on Halloween night, multiple Winnie the Poohs appeared, some with exaggerated expressions. What were they trying to say? Others had blank paper plastered all over their bodies, seemingly in solidarity with China's blank paper movement, which broke out at the end of last year to end zero COVID. Under the CCP's severe crackdown on freedom of speech, people seldom openly criticized the government. It seems a clever idea for people of Shanghai to make use of Halloween as a time for performance art. 
It looked weird and wacky, but as a behavioral language, onlookers know what they are aiming at, commemorating or cursing. The authorities couldn't allege that someone was subverting the regime or committing a political offense. Everyone knew whom he was condemning, but it's difficult to charge him with a crime. At most, the person might get a few days in the police station for provoking trouble. Perhaps this is why the people of Shanghai have used their imagination to the utmost. Who was this person? It was Liu Xuin, a writer from the era of the Republic of China on the mainland. He held a large print poster that read, Medicine will not save China. This writer was once regarded as a spiritual mentor somewhat by the revolutionary youth of that era. Now Lu Xuin appeared on the street speaking in a loud voice. I wish the Chinese youth would get rid of their apathy and not listen to the words of those who are self-destructive and self-absorbed. Those who can do something should do something, and those who can speak out should speak out. Unfortunately, the police soon arrived and chased him away. On this particular night, the police in Shanghai were very busy, and everywhere they went there were behaviors that didn't conform to socialist values and the party's requirements. This emperor was also expelled, and it's unclear which rule he violated. However, even though he was evicted by the police, both the actor and onlookers seemed to enjoy themselves and didn't seem embarrassed at all. Look, this person dressed up as an A-share stock market with falling stock indices and leaks in his hands. The implication is that China's stock market is a place to cut leaks. Here was another known ancient Chinese official called Bao Gong. He was called Qing Tian or Blue Sky, meaning that he was as innocent and just as the Blue Sky. He had three choppers, which were used on different levels of corrupt officials, including the high-ranking elite. Was this Bao Gong's crew here to catch the corrupt officials? Of course, it attracted the police. Some people put on the mask of the famous actor and director Wu Jing, who is the representative of the CCP's wolf warriors. Several individuals in Wu Jing costumes held signboards with the actor's famous line. It read, those who invade China, though far away, they will surely be executed. The international wars of the last two years and the abandonment of Chinese nationals by their governments have made many Chinese realize that the wolf warriors are just a lie. The costumes of the Shanghainese speak of the trauma of the times and traces of history. It looks like entertainment, but behind it are the scars of real life. As we've mentioned in several articles, the popular mentality of China's younger generation is that people are confused, anxious, and bitter about their future. So they get by or even lie flat or buy lawn, doing only the minimum. This cosplay was super simple, just a cardboard mask and black clothes. But this character has been spreading widely on the Chinese web, China's top online salesman. On this black outfit was a line that read, How is it expensive? This phrase can be said to have pierced the hearts of this generation of young people. Let's take a look at the previous episode and see what went on. An eyebrow pen costing about 10 US dollars has brought the reputation of Li Jiaqi, China's number one online salesman, to the bottom. Behind this is the grief of young Chinese people who are increasingly afraid to spend money, and their anger that they can't reach their goals no matter how hard they try. A girl in the audience said, this brand is getting increasingly expensive. How is it getting expensive? It has been this price for so many years. Don't speak nonsense with your eyes wide open. It's hard for a national brand. And this is really not the kind of brand that buys random raw materials to make the product. I've been with it for many years. I know how they built it up, and I am the one who knows it best. They almost showed me everything they had. They almost named their product with my last name, Li, okay? So it's nonsense to say it's expensive. It has been 1089 for so many years. How come it's expensive? Buy one and receive two free replacements. It's a good deal. US $10.89. Do you want to help me put it on? Sometimes you should look inside for your own reasons, okay? After so many years, has your salary increased? Have you worked hard? For so many years, the price has remained the same. I'm literally going crazy. A favorite emoji of Chinese social media is a skinny and tired monkey who is subservient to his leader. It smiles when it sees blame flung at it and responds by saying, It's me. The monkey is cautious and hardworking. In a similar vein, someone in the crowd put up a sign which read, A monkey's life is also a life. 
Someone was reminiscing about the past, the nightmarish past. Here was a student holding a textbook. Five years of trying college entrance exams. Three years of writing mock exams. The audience could imagine a red banner at her back that read, Thousands of horses cross the narrow wooden bridge. One more point in the exam means surpassing 1,000 others. Looking at the dark circles under her eyes, one can feel the nightmare Chinese students have been living. Some people yearn for the future, a future they can't reach. On this sign, it was written in Chinese. I am at the company longing to celebrate New Year's Eve, and a line in English, I blow my job. What is going on? For the first time, the CCP authorities have cancelled the holiday on the Chinese New Year's Day. Why? Rumor has it that the name of the holiday, New Year's Eve, has the same pronunciation as eliminating Xi, or to get rid of Xi Jinping. This is very ominous to Xi, the leader of the CCP. You can tell that the young people who were partying in the streets had a lot more on their minds. Cosplay is just a chance to escape for a short time. When the morning arrives, they still have to go to work. That's why this widely circulated photo from Halloween has left many young people feeling unspeakably sad. The sign read, For those who usually have a hard enough time pretending at work every day, on Halloween it's okay to not to pretend to be anything. Due to the large number of participants, the authorities had to close the surrounding metro stations and deploy many police officers to the scene. Later, the police began to clear the area, set up a cordon to prohibit the crowd from entering, and erected a separation wall. In some cases, the police simply lined up to separate the crowd, claiming any unapproved gathering was an offense. The next day, that is on November 1st, the authorities imposed crowd control measures, not only deploying more police officers and auxiliary police, but also imposing exit-only control measures on the street. The event also stirred up controversy on Chinese social media. Some people thought that Halloween was a foreign cultural infiltration, accusing these young people of pandering to foreigners. The following comments are representative of this view. The state should take action. It's long overdue. It is full of horror and bloody elements, contrary to the core values of socialism. I recommend to have it banned. Pandering to foreigners and promoting wrong values, contrary to the core values of socialism, it is recommended to ban it and hold the participants legally responsible and have it on their personal profiles. However, the actions of the young people in Shanghai have raised a resonance across China. On the Jihu website, the equivalent of Quora, a question and answer social website, a question is asked. How to evaluate this year's Halloween in Shanghai? It quickly reached the top of the hot list. What used to be an urban festival has become a topic of concern and complaint for many Chinese people. A netizen wrote, At first I thought it was just a childish brawl, a young man's playground, until I saw the cosplay. It instantly lifted the bar. This was a young man with a swollen face and a note stuck to his chest that read, Party B. It was a graphic representation of a phrase often used by Chinese youth. After leaving university, I am beaten up by society. One young lady expressed her feelings in a long article titled, We don't like foreigners' holidays, we just like to be crazy. The article describes, Shanghai Halloween cause took the lead. The Halloween atmosphere was all over the place. It brought out thousands of cosplayers who were mental, turning the ghost festival into a psycho friends convention. After happily browsing the pictures of Halloween in Shanghai, she went on to say, After all, it's impossible to go to work without going crazy. If you don't go crazy in silence, you will perish in silence. This netizen wrote, Although the body can't get there, the heart yearns for it, expressing the desire for freedom. The line was accompanied with a screenshot of a TV drama and a line borrowed from the drama. I suspect that you are a bourgeois liberal. Another netizen commented, None of what's presented at the Chinese New Year Gala is grounded. Film and television works are also 90% detached from the masses, so the masses have to create their own. Concerning the dissent triggered by Halloween in Shanghai, one netizen has a simple and sharp interpretation. With the masks out until now, I have noticed one thing. That is, some people are unhappy when they see that average Chinese people are happy. So, when I see that these people are unhappy, I am happy.